Okay, so let's talk about uh, JDBC. Right, so uh, JDBC uh, uh, stands for uh, Java Database uh, Connectivity, uh, and it's a um, it's a uh, set of libraries uh, from uh, from uh, Java that uh, allow us to connect to any number of database vendors. Uh, and their intent was that um, your code uh, can be written in terms of these libraries uh, in such a way that your code would not be uh, would not be specific to any one vendor. Uh, vendors certainly uh, are looking to differentiate between themselves because they're competing in this uh, market, right? Uh, and uh, certainly they can't differentiate themselves too much on the SQL uh, language, right? Because that's pretty much standard. Uh, but here and there, they will introduce certain features that are specific to their particular uh, offering, uh, and and so and that's not standard. And uh, and they'll you know they'll they'll try to uh, sell you. Uh, the fact of of, uh, of the benefits of using one feature here and there, uh, again with the intent to differentiate uh, against the, the competition, and um, and the trouble uh, the problem of, of doing that is that you know if you, uh, as you start using those particular features, then you become you know married to that particular uh, framework, um, which is unfortunate since some of those features are indeed uh, very very useful. Uh, so so the so so what Java's proposition is that. Um, well, as we see benefits from specific vendors, you know, we'll incorporate them in the standard, in JDBC standard, and we will make them available, right? That's certain features available through the different vendors. Um, and and the, the, way, the way they abstract the, uh, the underlying uh, fr uh, d database vendor is through, uh, through a couple of libraries. Uh, one of them is the driver. Uh, and and um, the connection and the statement. Those are the three main uh, uh, interfaces uh, that uh, allows the, uh, the vendor to in, in, uh, incorporate them, uh, interact with JDBC. Right? What, what the vendors do is that they, um, they take these libraries right? and they provide their own implementation of these libraries. Uh, and then when you, when, you, uh, when you write your code, um, you, your, your code is written to, uh, uh, is, is compiled uh, against the uh, the library uh, against the um, uh, against the interfaces, right? And um, and the, the actual library that, that implements those interfaces is loaded dynamically at runtime, right? Uh, and it could be either configured programmatically inside the code, which kind of defeats the purpose, uh, or it can be uh, configured in a configuration file outside of the code. Right? So if, if you're if you put it inside of the source code, you're kind of defeating the purpose of being independent of the vendor, uh, since that string depends on the vendor. Um, uh, and so ideally, you would configure it outside of your code. I mean, maybe it's some XML file or properties file uh, that can be read at runtime, right? And the infrastructure can read that and load the correct driver for the correct vendor, right? So that your source code is is truly independent of the vendor. Make sense? All right, so what JDBC only pro provides the interfaces, and then each vendor implements those interfaces with their own classes, with their own concrete classes. Uh, they they will have their own naming convention. Uh, so for the driver, uh, MySQL might have com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver, right? And it implements the uh, imp implements the um, uh, you know uh, Java's driver li uh, interface. Um, so, so these these uh, interfaces provide a method such as uh, first we get a hold of a, a driver instance. We'll see that in a minute. Uh, once you have that driver uh, dynamically loaded, uh, you can provide the URL to where the database is executing, right? And the URL can be anywhere in the world, right? as long as you have the IP address or or some name uh, to where, where that's located. Uh, you would provide that URL there. Uh, and then the properties can be username, password, all sorts of, uh, um, or credentials, and, and any, any, uh, quite, a, quite a few uh, properties, you know, the name of the schema that you want to start with, the, the name of the database. Um, and then that gives you a connection, uh, a JDBC connection. Once you have that connection, uh, you can create statements, uh, a, a statement object. Uh, that, that statement object is a, this is a, you know, is, is a, it's a live connection to a database. Right? It's an open connection. You're talking live to the to, the, to a database. Very expensive object. Um, 
since it has to establish a connection, uh, there are you know there's only a finite number of connections that the database uh, will have open at any one time. Uh, so so you have to make sure you manage their life cycle, right? That uh, that w when you open it, you make sure to close it. Uh, you know, if you run it multiple times, you forget to close them. At some point, the database is going to say, "Oh, I ran out of connections." Right? And uh, if you're in a team and you are run, you know, running tests, uh, and someone someone says, you know, uh, "I ran out of connections," who did not close the connection? Make sure it's not you. Uh, that you are closing all your connections. That um, that's not your fault. Uh, yeah. So remember to close your connections. Uh, so once you have a connection, you can create a statement. A statement is the abstraction uh, of a command that you're going to execute in the database, right? So, uh, so any you know any it's a select statement, an in, in, um, an insert, an update, a delete, right? All those are statements. It's a generic statement uh, that you can either uh, th those statements can either uh, are are, uh, are right. Uh, or read only, right? So, for instance, select statements are read only, yes. Uh, whereas uh, inserts and updates and deletes are, are write operations, right? They're they're changing the state of the of the database. Uh, so, typically, the uh, the statement will, will will provide methods to either query, right? If it's a select statement, uh, and will return a result set, you know, a, 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 a a class that allows you to iterate over. The rows that match that uh, that uh, that query, okay? um, which which introduces its own um, challenges, right? Because uh, the the, ma the number of rows that might match a query uh, might be you know thousands of rows, right? Tens of thousands of rows that match your query. Yes, uh, it would make no sense to load tens of thousands of objects into RAM, right? That might represent each one of those rows, right? So. So this result set that comes back from the query is actually a very smart object that allows that uh, allows you to iteratively um, iteratively iterate uh, over all you know, those tens of thousands of rows, um, you know, uh, as if they were actually there at, 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 uh, whenever you need them, right? Uh, but indeed, underneath uh, it has a very complex caching mechanism uh, that only fetches. You know, so many, so many objects, or instantiate so many objects at a time, right? Uh, uh, so that it gives you the illusion that you're iterating over the entire data set, uh, but really you're only iterating over maybe dozens or hundreds of rows, right? Uh, that are, are being read and instantiated as you iterate over the entire data set uh, that match that query. Um, for, the, for the updates, uh, again, you, you execute an SQL command. Uh, but it comes back with some status information, you know, how many records were uh, were updated and whatnot. Right. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's the main uh, set of uh, uh, set, set of APIs for for JDBC. Let's let's take a look at um, a little more. Yeah, so result set, as I mentioned earlier, uh, allows you to uh, iterate over a um, set of, of rows, right, that have met your criteria, your certain your select criteria. Uh, it allows you to go one at a time uh, using the iterator pattern, the iterator design pattern, right? Uh, where, where instead of the uh, instead of you being in control of the iteration, you delegate the iteration over to uh, to, to a class, right? That that knows how to iterate over 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 the, uh, the set, right? Uh, notice that if this were a for loop uh, over a regular array, the array would have to be an instance, right? Would have to contain the entire set of objects instantiated in the array. Right? So instead, um, we don't want to do that. We don't want to iterate over the array because we don't want to load tens of thousands of records. Uh, instead, we delegate it to the result set and it allows us to uh, to go next, 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 uh, get the next record, um, and then read uh, from the record, you know, an integer or a string and whatnot. Uh, it also allows us to uh, interact with the um, the metadata of a of a database. Uh, we we can ask, you know, what tables are there, right? And and given this table, what are the columns of those tables, right? And what are the data set? What, what are the data types? Right? Is it a date? Is it a, a is it a string? Is it an integer? Is it a boolean? What is it? 
right? So it can it can ask about the, uh, the 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 structure of the data itself. Get the number of how many columns there are, the names of the columns, the data types. Um, so it can ask about the metadata of the uh, of the uh, of the of, of the schema. Uh, so here's a, a here's a very simple uh, example, and kind of going back to the um, the the, uh, uh, the the toy database that we've been using uh, all along, right? The students, the sections, the uh, the enrollments and whatnot, right? So here's a student major, uh, and um, and here's a here's the URL, here's the URL to a, a a database that is a the vendor is MySQL. Right, the, uh, it's running locally on my machine. It's listening at 3306, and the database is called StudentDB. So this is the URL, uh, and uh, and we would we would uh, load the driver manager uh, here. Um, I think we're missing. Uh, typically, there would be one more line here, which is missing. Let me add that. Uh, they would also be here. Um, let me make this a little smaller, I guess. Uh, where is the? Uh, oh, there we go. That's too small. Okay, let me. Uh, there we go. Okay, there would be here an additional line here that would say class dot for name, uh, and you would provide here the name of the driver, right? The actual class of the underlying vendor, right? That uses the uh, that is implementing the class the, the the driver. Uh, so, for instance, if it's SQ MySQL, you would do something like com dot MySQL dot JDBC dot driver. Uh, and this, uh, what this would do is that it would search for the, the for that class on the class path, right? And when it finds it, right, it loads it dynamically, uh, and um, uh, and it would um, it would instantiate a, an instance of the driver manager, right? And the driver manager is the object that you would then use to get a hold of the connection, right? So that class that for name, and typically this class that for name. It would be in a try catch because that can fail. So let me move that in a try catch. There we go. Okay, I'll I'll fix it up. Yeah, so that that can throw an exception, say I can't find that that class on the class path. Right. Uh, once I have that, the driver, the driver manager, I can pass in that URL, uh, the username and password. It, it loads. It loads, and, and, and have, we have an instance of the connection. Once we have the connection, uh, we can then uh, ask for a statement. So connection that creates statement. Uh, we can we can then concatenate a, a, a string with a with a select statement. Select uh, student name, department name from a department student where major ID is equal to department ID, uh, and then we can execute a statement dot execute query SQL, which returns a result set. Uh, and then we can iterate over the result set, you know, one at a time. Uh, result that next. Uh, so, so what, hap what, what happens here is that the result, when, it, when the data comes back from um, uh, from the database, uh, the re result set represents all the rows that match that that query. Uh, and here's the first, second, third row that in that result set. Uh, and uh, the result set ma maintains a cursor. Uh, that points at the current row that I'm currently looking at, okay? And uh, and the very, very first time, before the very first result that next, that cursor is not is not pointing to any any um, any one row, right? Not until you do a dot next uh, does it actually advance and point to the to the to the first or second or or, or next that next row, okay? So it has to be uh, before you start interact with that row, uh, you do you need to do a, a result dot next. So the result dot next moves the cursor forward, and up until up until it you know falls out and there are no more rows, uh, and then and then it returns false. Okay, uh, this position is referred to as uh, before first, right? And this position is referred to as 
after last. Okay? Uh, obviously, this would be the first and this would be the last position. Uh, and result, uh, the newer versions, the, um, uh, the Java the, um, the libraries uh, that are under the Java X um, package uh, have additional methods such as result.first, result.last, okay, that allow you to jump you know, to the first, the last. Right? There's also result.skip that allows you to skip so many rows. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, in the in the in the newer versions, there's also uh, previous. You can say result that previous, so you can you can navigate uh, the rows backwards and forwards. Okay, uh, the the basic implementation only allows you to go forward. Dot next. Right. So so any any libraries that you have under Java dot uh, SQL, right? Those are those are only that, that's a, that, those those are the simple implementations, right? The uh, just dot next. That's it. Right, but the ones on the Java X that SQL uh, it has many, many more uh, implementations, uh, features. Uh, all right, so once once you're at a particular row, that row might have multiple columns, right? Might might have first name, uh, last name, whatnot, right? So it has a name, uh, and and you can you can say result dot if you know the data type, uh, you can say you get if, if you know it's a bar chart. Uh, you can say the name of the column, uh, and then it'll return the value of that particular uh, field in that row. So if you're in that row, right, it'll use the name of the you can use the name of the field to retrieve that value for that particular uh, cell. Uh, so you can get the string, uh, you can get the, the uh, department name, the S name, uh, and here we're just printing it out. And at the, at the very last thing we're doing is that we're closing the result set. We're closing the result set. And um, and uh, um, oh, and a, and a point on closing everything that you've used. So so you would need to close everything. Uh, just so uh, the connections that you open, the statements that you open, the result sets that you open, all those are live objects right, that have a live connection to a database. Right? Until you release them explicitly, they will stay live connected to a database. Right? That means that you are using a resource. Uh, in the newer versions, uh, under the Java X, um, those allow what it's called pooling, uh, where instead of you having a live connection, uh, you are you are using a shared resource, right? Where uh, only your thread has access to that connection or or statement or result set only during the duration of your thread. Okay, so in multi-threaded environments, uh, when your thread goes to sleep. Right, that connection or that statement could be used by someone else. Right, um, or um, typically when you when you're done and you you fall out of scope, when your thread goes out of scope, uh, your connection goes back to a pool, uh, so that other threads can grab it from that pool. Right, because the connections are very expensive, are very expensive objects to instantiate. Right, uh, so you don't want to have you don't want to have to. You know, instantiate the connection and then and then throw it away and then reinstantiate it and then throwing it away, right? It takes a you know it's a it's a network connection. It's very 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 expensive. So, so on the on the newer Java X versions, uh, they support pooling and shared amongst multi multi in, in a multi-threaded environment. Uh, we're first going to look at uh, the, the 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 simple J uh, JDBC. Uh, here's more on closing. Uh, so so yeah, you would have multiple try catch blocks. Catching, you know, class not found, SQL exceptions, and whatnot, uh, and then you would have a, a finally block uh, at the end of your try catch, right? Uh, where you can close your connection. Um, now your connection itself can throw exceptions, and so you'll you'll need to like nest, uh, 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 you know, uh, another try catch inside of the finally. So it looks it looks pretty weird, uh, but uh, but yeah. So the finally meaning. The very last thing you do, make sure that you close the connection. Okay. Uh, properties. Uh, so right, so you can you can um, uh, it, there there might be multiple properties that you that you, you that you can add, not just using them in password. Uh, you you can you can check to see if a database has a particular feature. Um, uh, you can you can say you know if uh, uh, by default. If the if you make a connection to a to a database that doesn't exist, 
Uh, by default, is that it'll, it'll create the database for you, right? It'll be there, um, so you can turn that off. You can say, no, well, no, I don't want, I don't want that. Or, or tables, tables when you, um, oftentimes when um, in ORMs, uh, oftentimes it creates a table every time you deploy. You might want to turn that off, right? Because you you might have already data in that table. You don't want to throw it away, so you can turn that off. So there's a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of properties that you can turn on and off, and, uh, and the way you can configure that is by using the properties Java uh, class. That's basically like a hash table uh, that allows you to put a, you know you, a key uh, property and then and then the value of it, and you can provide it as an argument to the connect uh, function. Um, uh, change a uh, change major. Okay, so here's a here's a uh, okay. We've we've we've, uh, we've encapsulated the instantiation of the driver. Uh, here's a um, here's a uh, an, an update, right? So we're creating the statement just like we did earlier, uh, but in this case we are the, the command is update students uh, set major id thirty where. Uh, student, so this is a student who's changing major, right? And they're going to, uh, they're changing career now is uh, in the drama department. Uh, notice the difference here. He was uh, using execute update as opposed to execute query. Uh, and then we close the connection. So don't forget to close the connection. Um, RS Next, as I, as I mentioned earlier, allows you to iterate, um, iterate over a, a result set. Right, position before first record. Uh, metadata, um, as I mentioned earlier, metadata allows you to uh, query the database and say, and to, to be able to like describe the data. Say, say you don't know that you're connecting to a to a database and you don't know what the what the structure of the database is. You don't know what the table names are, what the field names are. Right up to this point, the uh, all those statements have assumed that you know the name of the table, you know the name of the fields. Right, you, you don't have to. Um, you can ask for the meta for the description of the database, uh, like a list of all the tables, uh, and then given a table, you can ask for the description of the table, like all the columns, all the data types, and whatnot. And based on that, you can you can generate a, a generic uh, database um, browser, right? That allows you to browse uh, through the database. So here's an example of creating uh, a result set from a result set, and you can uh, create a metadata. Um, and from that metadata, you can say, well, how many columns are there? Right? I'm gonna, I, we can iterate over the, num the number of the columns. You can ask for the individual names of those columns, um, uh, for, uh, and, and then also ask for the uh, for for how many if it's, if it's integer one or var char forty five. How many how many characters? What's the size of that of that uh, uh, of that uh, column? The column type is this will come back with a uh, with an enumerated data type of the type uh, that you can compare against a class called types that has all the SQL types represented there. Right? So, so that uh, if it's integer, if it's varchar, if it's this, that, or the other, you can you can you know, render it in any which way uh, you want. So, so here's a very simple iterator that you know, that uh, iterates over the columns of a particular table. Uh, so here's here's kind of like a um, uh, a mini uh, command, uh, uh, a command um, uh, uh, program that can read from the from the command line and then execute the uh, the query. Uh, depending on the depending on what you type in the command, uh, depending if it starts with select, uh, it will do a query. If it's not a select, then it assumes that it must be an insert, an update, or delete. Right, so it interprets that as a command. Um, so here's a you know. A little, a little command line uh, interpreter that you know, types in SQL and then executes the query. Um, uh, the uh, the do the do query is uh, from the connection it uh, get, gets a hold of the statement uh, and then executes the command that you actually type in the command line. Uh, it gets the metadata, the metadata so that it knows how it's going to how it's gonna render it, right? So that it knows how to how to format it. Right, so that uh, if it needs 45 characters for varchar, it'll you know it'll take uh, that many spaces to represent your string, and uh, and then just iterates over each one of the columns, 
uh, and displays a table you know, with the names of the names of the fields at the top, and then the and, the, and then the various rows uh, displayed. And so we're we're implementing a, a mini a, a mini interpreter, right? A mini uh, 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 my my SQL. Uh, it, it's iterating over all the columns now, uh, displaying the field names uh, depending on the types of the strings. It'll it'll use the size to to size to to size the the the, the format. Uh, and the updates just um, updates and just returns how many records were uh, were processed. 